All right, so let's let's deal with these couple of questions, and then we'll uh, start the homework quiz. Sound good? So Taylor, why don't you were asking about like one of these one through six. Did you have a preference? No, no, there's one that's like reasonably difficult, but not too difficult. Something that looks like what's on the homework. They're kind of all the same to me. Well, to you, yeah. But like, what's one that takes a decent amount of time? I think they're again. I think that they're all the same. I mean, I guess three through six because they ask for all the values instead of just one specific value is like I guess it takes a little bit longer because you gotta find all of them but like it's not that big of a deal uh yeah go ahead Grace I, I'm asking for identities on the quiz uh Aaron you know, I guys want to do four. Yeah. Well, yeah. Is the quiz like it's one through six, or is it simplifying two? Simplifying two. Okay. It's one through fourteen is the quiz. All right. So, looking at number four. Right away. If I know secant is one or is five, I know cosine is one fifth because they're reciprocals, right? That's I used an identity to do that. Cool. Um, next, what I'm going to do, I observe that since sine is positive, I know it's reciprocal also has to be positive. Thank you, Aaron. That's for you. So I can say I know that cosecant is also positive, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my identities now, and I'm going to be looking at my Pythagoreans for something that involves either secant or cosine, and then sine or cosecant. Any Pythagorean that involves two of those four is fine. So maybe I use P1 that says um, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one. Can you still use like the, like the, like A squared plus B squared equals C squared just with the actual thing? That's P1, right? Sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Can you use that? Well, you'll use one of the Pythagoreans probably every time. It'll vary depending on the stuff that you have. Yes. So uh, when I solve this, then I get that one over five squared is one over twenty-five. I square root both sides. I have the square root of, or I subtract one over twenty-five from both sides. I have twenty-four over twenty-five. I square root both sides, and that becomes sine theta equals plus or minus 2 root 6 over 5. I just, well, I just took the square root of 24 over 25 and then simplified. Um, and since I know sine is positive, I can say, okay, well, sine is definitively positive. 2 root 6 over 5. So with that, we can say that like the hypotenuse is 5. No, I can say cosecant, though, is the reciprocal, which is 5 root 6 over 12. I rationalize the denominator. Yeah, oh. 2 times 6. 2 times 6. Oh. Right? And now the last two I have to get are tangent and cotangent. I'm going to find an identity that involves either tangent and cotangent, tangent or cotangent, and then two of any of these four that I know. Um, so, for example, I would probably choose to use here um, cotangent. Um, 
which is cosine over sine. So that simplifies down to root 6 over 12. And then tangent is just the reciprocal of that. So that's going to be um, 2 root 6 over um, 1. Is that okay with that? Yeah. So again, I just used the identities. I didn't use, I didn't draw any reference triangles. It's kind of equivalent. Does that feel okay, Taylor? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Aaron? Sure. Um, so I know that um, we're asking for sine. We're given cosine. So probably going to use the Pythagorean. So I know sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So 1 over 4 squared is 1 over 16. If I subtract 16 from both sides, or 1 over 16 from both sides, I get 15 over 16. And if I square root both sides, I get plus or minus square root 15 over 4. Now I just need to figure out um, whether this is positive or negative. So I know tangent is sine over cosine. And I know that's negative. Cosine is absolutely positive because it's one fourth. That means sine needs to be negative. So sine has to be negative root 15 over 4. Figure out with whether what was positive or negative. Uh, well, because tangent is sine over cosine, and I know tangent is negative. Cosine, we know the value for, it's absolutely positive. So that means sine has to be negative to make tangent negative. Cool? Uh, Josh? Could be like a very general question. Sure. For you personally, what do you do, especially with like your five questions? What do you do for your Um. So typically, I'm going to start with a Pythagorean that I know, or with the part that I know. So I'm going to use the Pythagorean that has cosecant squared in it. And solve for whatever it has. In this case, it's going to be cotangent, which is great, because I can tell immediately whether that should be positive or negative. And then I can relate cotangent to secant and cosecant. So I know cotangent, I know cosecant. All I have to do is then algebraically solve for secant. Does that make sense, Josh? Uh, so almost always what I'm going to be doing for these problems is doing a Pythagorean so cotangent's positive so we have that and then I'm going to use a quotient so I know cotangent is equal to um, secant, I'm sorry, cosecant over secant. So if I multiply both sides by secant and then divide by cotangent, 
I can say that. And then I just fill in what I know, which is negative 3 over 2 root 2, and then rationalize my denominator. So again, Pythagorean, whatever Pythagorean I can do with the stuff that I know, and then a quotient identity that relates two of the three things I know to what I'm missing. So it's like this and this. Yeah, yeah. And I think almost all of them are just basically just that. So Pythagorean and then quotient. Uh, Nat Natalia? Sure. Um, so again, when we're doing these simplifying ones, the first thing I typically look for is something algebraic to do. If I look at this, I see two possible algebraic things to do. Can you, anyone tell me what one of those two is? Okay, there's the greatest common factor of tangent. The other option would be making a common denominator to add the fractions. If I look at those, the factoring the tangent out seems like the much better option to me. Because when I do that, it's going to make the numerators of these fractions 1, which is great because I have a bunch of identities that are going to allow me to change those fractions or get rid of those fractions, right? So that's why I'm going to make that choice rather than making a common denominator there. Not wrong to do that, Natalia, but this feels like it's going to be much, much faster. Um, again, I could make a common denominator here. I don't, I'm going to choose not to do that because I can get rid of these fractions just by using reciprocal identities. And that feels to me, or at least my intuition tells me, getting rid of the fractions is going to is always is typically going to be a lot better than having to grind through a million fractions. So 1 over cosecant squared is sine squared, and 1 over cosine squared is, or 1 over secant squared is cosine squared. And I see sine squared plus cosine squared. That's just 1. So I just have tan times 1 which is tan. And that's the quickest way to do that. If you had tried to do something different, this one could have gotten very messy. I think it was the worst one in here. If you had tried to turn everything into sines and cosines and grind through making common denominators and stuff, this got pretty messy pretty quick. Um, in general, the problems that I'm going to give you there's going to be some way to do it in like, you know, maximum like four steps. So if you're sitting there like 10 steps later, you may still be doing fine. But rest assured, like if you're like, this is just getting worse and worse and worse, I can't see a way to get making this better. Probably stop and try something different in the beginning. Because they shouldn't, they shouldn't be like a full page to do one of these. You're not going to have, I'm not going to give you a problem like that. It's okay if you take a full page to do it. If you're like, okay, this is getting messy, but I still kind of see what, I see an end. That's fine. But if you're like, I, this looks like a tremendous mess and I see no way out of this. Maybe rethink what you're doing in the beginning and try something different. Does that make sense? Seven, you said? Sure. Can you girls stop talking while I'm trying to go through these things? Thank you. Um, so seven, nothing algebraic to do because I just have two things multiplied together that are not common. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to either try to write cotangent so that it has a sine in it or write sine so that it has a cotangent in it. Now, if I look at my identity sheet, the only thing that I can rewrite sine into is one over cosecant. Not helpful. So let's look at the cotangent stuff. I can write cotangent as 1 over tangent. Not helpful. I can write as cosine over sine. That I like. It has a sine in it. Even though it's turning into a fraction, 
I'm okay with that because at least now I have some common um, or like terms. So I'm gonna think about this as sine as just a fraction, sine over one. Cool with that? So now I know I can reduce when I do that multiplication and I'm left with just cosine u and that's down to a single thing. As good as we'll do. Does that feel okay? Um, again, was it? I hope it was helpful like me talking through kind of what the options are, what I'm seeing, what I'm trying to do. I'll try to do that as much as I possibly can on these. I think that's probably quite helpful in developing some intuition about like what are good things to do and what are bad things to do. If we run through the options and talk about like what could I possibly do and why I would choose to do this or one thing versus another. Um, I'll try to do that as much as I possibly can. And if you ever have a situation like, hey, why didn't you do this? Or could we have done that? Please like, feel free to interject and ask. And we can certainly talk through those sorts of things. I think it's really important that you get a good feel for like what is okay to do or not okay to do or what's neutral. Like, okay, that would have been fine to do also. It's you know, maybe it adds an extra step or something, but it's not a big deal. You could have certainly done it that way. Versus like, that I probably wouldn't have done, not because it's wrong, but because of this reason, this reason, this reason. You know, like it's not getting me any closer to where I'm trying to go to. Um, like it's making it less simplified with no hope of like, no obvious route to declutter what I've just done. You know what I mean? Um, so I'll try as much as I possibly can to kind of add that narrative for you guys. But if you ever have questions about like why you could, couldn't could do this or that, those are all things please, please, please like ask. I'm happy to walk through it and kind of show you if not, if my explanation verbally isn't enough. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, Last call on questions before we do this darn thing. Okay, let's do it.